Well, I'm driving home. We're going out tonight. That's what you do when it has no game to watch. And I just made two videos that yeah, I'll post later today. But there is something else that I was thinking about. It's also World Cup related and it might be a good time to discuss this now. And it's kind of how can we make the World Cup better? And for that we first have to figure out what what do I not like about the World Cup? <laughs> well, there are a few things. I think the first one I already touched uh, this morning, the, these are those dead rubber games or where you just have, you know, teams not playing for first place or I got to know and I, I'm sorry I didn't get this to know this sooner, that Japan basically played the last five minutes um, like Germany and Austria did in 82, just passing the ball around, Poland no out attacking. I can't get it because Poland was threatening two more times, uh, right in the 75th and the, seven, and the 80th minute, or 85th minute. So I think they really needed to gamble because if they would be attacking more, then they, they risk of losing by two goals and then they would lose the tiebreaker. Uh, of course you have to risk that Senegal is not making a goal against Colombia. But yeah, I think a coach said it right. It was, uh, it was a tough choice to make but he uh, put all his money on Colombia beating Senegal. And he was right to do so. So yeah. This, this situation, as much drama as there was in groups B and D to end the tournament, and to some degree group F, um, when there's already one team eliminated uh, and you know you have those games and then people are uh, playing the second string squads and I'm all in favor of them doing that. If you get the chance, do whatever you like. I don't think you perform better. It's not. For, it's not really for your benefit all over. But if it's within the rules, that's fine. Um, and also, FIFA come coming out and warning, for instance, England and Belgium to play nice. Otherwise, there will be sanctions. That's stupid. Um, you gotta put some incentive there. And I think the trouble comes not only are you qualified. I don't think you can find a real solution for that. And I think FIFA has it already nice in place that. The direct duel doesn't count as much, it's always goal difference first. And I think it keeps the groups generally more open than um, they would be otherwise. Like at the Euros there are really a lot of already decided games, um, uh, the way the, the things are set up. I also don't think that it helps to kind of make it fixed seating that the two strongest team meet at the end, because that's exactly what happened with England versus Belgium. Um, would it turn around to have the two strongest teams meet first? Well, this was the Germany, Spain, uh, not the Germany, the Portugal, Spain case, and probably that could help. But then you would have so many great matchups at the beginning of the World Cup when the teams are not yet in shape. So it's also a little bit, I can see our arguments against it. I think the biggest thing to avoid this is, especially since you know who is playing, um, either the seeding that I suggested in the previous video um, to really have the groups have fixed seats so that it's um, that you don't have those Germany Brazil possible matchups that everyone gets scared of that's one way uh, to fix it the other way is of course and I think this is the harder way to do it put them all in a pot and make the, make a draw after the group stage um, but I honestly think for that to happen uh, the ticket system needs to be adjusted you that's a big problem for me uh, this way you know uh, where the teams will be playing um, come second round quarterfinal and so on you wouldn't have that uh, maybe you can maybe you could say that okay the winner of group a plays in this stadium green of group b and so on plays in this stadium and then the second place teams are sorted there but then uh, it doesn't solve really the problem i think i think this is the one big problem and i think in order to really make this happen you would have to i really think you would have to take a week off and sort it all out and that is a bus killer in a way so um but that would take i think this would really take care of the big problem um 
the teams will not want to go for first place because they are better off. Uh, so yeah, this is the obvious fix. Uh, what else can we do to make the World Cup better? Well, I mean, the other thing it's already happening. Don't make your, make, make your the 48 teams. I already said that before as well. I think going to 48 teams kills will uh, kill the World Cup in the sense that, you know, you will have groups of three, which is the craziest idea. They already tried this in 82 and um, it didn't work out that well. Um, for once you you can always have that one team is already eliminated before the last game or yeah you get weird man 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 matchups or, or there's one team in contention but if the two teams that are still there um there will be a result that both of them can qualify um not a good system um the other reason why i think it's waters down the field i really think it will water down the field it will and while I have the feeling that the games become a lot more competitive overall because the smaller teams are very well organized. Uh, it's mostly defensive for organization and yeah, maybe you want to get more goals in uh, by having less teams play each other but um, the quality will suffer because I mean the quality of the World Cup is enjoyable as this World Cup has been. And I really think it is one of the more enjoyable ones. Um, it had mostly tight games, but every game had at least a goal, except for the one really boring France against um, France against Denmark game. Uh, but every game had at least one goal, uh, and there were not too many shootouts as well. So it was all tight, and I think this makes this makes this work particularly interesting and actually good to watch. So. Um, Yes, it's more competitive. I think you will lose that balance again. Yes, you want to take more uh, kids to the table and share the wealth in a way, but I think it's the wrong step. Um, also, 48, yes, it is better than 40 because then it would have groups of five, which is also awkward. Um, so going to 48 is a little bit more logical, but um, go, go for me, go for 64, and leave the top team qualify. Uh, that's my also the one thing. I think the 48 team World Cup, I would be maybe more on board with it if the top team of each group would only qualify. That way, um, every game really, really, really counts. Um, and yeah, if the top team played the first two games and won it, and then you have the last game where it's nothing to play for, well, at least you get uh, you get two teams playing for all of them. Uh, which actually were probably the more interesting games in those uh, dead groups that we had. So, but we won't reverse that. I think I would like a 48 team World Cup where they just got rid of one lockout stage and you have you only the top two qualifying. Otherwise, you have to go to 64 uh, teams, and that becomes unwieldy. I would say. The other thing that I'm not sure if it needs fixing, but I always had this idea about the VAR, the video assistant video referees. I actually mostly like the way they're doing it at this World Cup and I have to give them big credit that they really got, they really found the system that works well, it's just not consistent. Especially penalty calls, uh, which, which do you review, which, which you don't review. I understand that pulling down a player in the box is a judgment call, but I go back to the Mitrovic one. Uh, I think everyone that watches that, I mean, if you go in a bar and ask is this a penalty or not, everyone will say this is a penalty. So, although it's a judgment call, I really would say review this half, have the referee have at least another look at it. He doesn't need to get it. It doesn't need to change his, 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 his spinning right there and then. Um, I don't mind the stoppages, but if you mind the stoppages, and this is inspired by American football in my view and this is probably contentious um, but the NFL gives every coach three challenge uh, two challenges and if the challenge is made so that the call is overturned then they lose a timeout and timeouts are vital in America most of the time now in soccer we don't have timeouts but we have substitutions and I really think this could work give each coach two challenges 
and if he loses the challenge, he uses a substitution. Ex and I would make the caveat except there's an injury out there and he has exhausted his other sub sub substitutions. Maybe then, but even that we can discuss about. I think then uh, the video referee will only be called for in really crucial situations and you still would have that the referee has to call a game how they would call it. I know, I, with everyone I, I, I discussed that don't necessarily agree with me, I thought I, I think it would be interesting to put another tactic component in there. Um, and then the other thing that I thought, and this is a long time ago, and I got this idea from the World Cup of Hockey, when it was played I think two years, years ago, or one year ago, actually, I think it was two years ago. Um, where they had a Team Europe, an under-23 team in North America, but it was mostly this Team Europe that fascinated me. Uh, the idea of the World Cup of Hockey is to have all stars of the game, this, in this case hockey, participate in the tournament. And with Team Europe you get all those players from Germany, Austria, um, I think Slovakia was also not there, you know, uh, good players that don't have a good team around and make a selection team. Now at this World Cup we have some star players missing. Gareth Bale uh, is, I think, comes to mind first, but there are surely others, um, Dutch players, Italian players, uh, also players from smaller nations that wouldn't necessarily qualify with their. I mean, Gareth Bale in Wales is, I think, the first and foremost of these. And um, so my idea was. Um, I, do, I agree that the world champion should qualify for, for a tournament. I may keep, keep an us, but ultimately make a world team. And probably take uh, the mani uh, one national team manager of um, a team that didn't qualify and they can uh, choose a squad from all the remaining players. Therefore, you would increase star power. And um, I don't think this team would be necessarily very successful because despite all that, you, that you have all the stars, you would also, they would also not be gelling that well. I mean, Team Europe at the World Cup of Hockey, they did quite well, they made it to the finals. So maybe there's something, but I think this could add something interesting because you could get all the players in and then everyone has a team to root for, in a way. Now, of course, then needs to make sure, let's say, the Italian manager will get the call to be the world manager because Italy uh, didn't qualify like, like it did this year. You need to avoid that, of course, all uh, chosen players for the for first squad is then, are then from Italy. I think there should be a limit of, let's say, two, two players per country in, in the squad. But I think this, I would like to see this, honestly. I am sure purists will be against it, but yeah, I like to get new ideas in. Wow, it now starts raining, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, um, and then the one how the tie-breaking with the yellow cards is the last thing. Uh, the more I think about it, the less I like it. I understand you have to find something and something that you can control. Um, would it take corner kicks? Difficult, difficult, because corner kicks, um, you need to then have a method to, uh, people would go for corner kicks. Would you take uh, shots on goal? Well, this is also super tricky because um, how do you define a shot on goal? I mean, I can very well see uh, suddenly making a long distance shot that hits the goal, but then a big chance that just missed the goal would not count. Um, of course, you could use uh, expected goals, but that's not an official statistics. Uh, but that would be my preferred way, because then you would really um, reward teams that generated chances. So uh, that would be my my way to go about it. Use expected goals a little bit more advanced statistics, um, because even using possession would not be fair. Uh, you could use how often you play in the opposing half but then if you watch Germany against South Korea yes they were mostly in the opposing half because uh, Korea was in there but did Germany create much they were just passing the ball around similarly Argentina but I think some statistic that measures how well you played like expected goals 
I think this could work here. But of course this is something that needs to be computed and someone needs to be able to compute that. And yeah, this is I think a little bit more tricky. I would love to see that. So yeah, these are a few thoughts. I'm sure more will come to my mind. And maybe it's the time also, maybe it's not the best time to discuss them now, maybe F later on. But I might, I might come back to some of these ideas. Let me know what you think about this, how you would like to improve the World Cup. And yeah, we still have the whole knockout round. There will surely come other things that we can discuss about. But until then, I'll talk to you soon and I hope you enjoyed this video. Up until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.